I'm Taylor Gilbert. I'm Sam Anderson. And this is the Road Theatre Company. In 1991, a group of very talented directors, designers, and actors came together to create the Road Theatre Company. And we've been producing new works for almost 30 years, primarily West Coast Los Angeles premieres. I think the thing we're also excited about is the success that we've had with emerging as well as very well-known playwrights Absolutely. who feel very safe here with the most dangerous of their works because they know that we're going to take care of them as well as provide a great experience for our audience. We, we like something that will make the audience walk away and think and have a conversation. And our audiences have come to expect that, appreciate it, and even love it that it's a great place to stay and have a conversation afterwards about what you saw. Disagreements abound frequently, which is great. great. It's exactly <laughs> what we want. But what they get each time they come is a brand new experience that's as good as it gets. We're a company of about 160 people. Talented actors, directors, designers, producers, all committed to this particular process of taking a new play with a playwright and shepherding it from the beginning through to a production and hopefully to some life after that. We all came together with the same mission of an mm -hmm. ensemble and what we found over the years is because of that it draws the best, the cream of the crop. Our actors, it, it's an amazing pool of people and it started right from the beginning. Included in the makeup of our, of our people are very young talented actors who are right out of uh, theater schools, to um, very, very experienced actors who have tons of credits in all of the various media who just love to work here and want to do the kind of work that we do. The material is new and it's top notch and so are the writers. The directors we get are spectacular. The uh, production values at the road are very atypical of the smaller black box theaters in Los Angeles. And people who come here are continually surprised at how the space itself is transformed from show to show. Do you feel like you're walking into a different building every time you come to see something? We have a lot of designers, but our resident designers are the best in the city. And in fact, um, the LA Times has said that those values rival anything on the larger theaters anywhere. And we tend to agree. I think what's unique about The Road is that we have consistently produced new works for over 29 years now and have garnered over 200 awards. And one of the local critics, uh, very aptly I think, called the theater one of LA's greatest living treasures for that very reason. And that we're very proud of and continue to try and live up to that standard. The Road's mission has always been to create work that is what we consider to be politically and socially relevant. And therefore, we don't shy away from might be a contemporary show that's going to push a lot of buttons. We really want you to be here and listen to what's happening today, and hopefully that may help us change tomorrow. We stay steadfastly committed to what is considered the most dangerous of theater missions, new work for the stage and we hope that you take this journey with us.
Hi, I'm Taylor Gilbert, founder and artistic director of the Road Theatre Company, and... And I'm Sam Anderson, artistic director of the Road Theatre Company. We're here to welcome you to week two of the Road's SPF 12. The largest playwrights festival of its kind in the country. The Road's mission is new works, new voices in American theatre. And this past year, even new forms of presenting them. <laughs> Re remember where we were last year? Oh boy. In a pandemic, locked down and trying to figure out some way to move forward regardless, mm. right? So we took a big leap into the Zoom world and recorded 25 readings of new plays for SPF 11. A truly virtual festival that ran on our website and YouTube channel for three weeks. Complete with talkbacks with the writers, directors, and the cast. That's right. And to our great surprise, the results were astonishing. We reached 18, well, over. 18,000 right. viewers on six continents. Wow. And thanks to their generosity, donations to the road were historical. We were able during the year to, to further our mission by presenting two original works right. in a hybrid form. Staged live with actors and directors and filmed for broadcast on streaming services. It has been a remarkable year. It certainly has. And now we're back to SBF 12, bringing you more new works from around the world. And once again, we'll remind you, if you like what we do, you can donate. That's right. As we begin to move back to live production and continue to do taped readings and hybrid productions, we need you now more than ever. Please, see as many of these great new works as you can. And tell your friends. So, from both of us, welcome, welcome to, to SPF 12, 12. Week 2. Hi, I'm Jenny Webb. So glad you're here for my play, The Big Red Naugahyde Booth, or Would Be Elks. I hope you can stick around afterwards, stay in the booth with us, raise a glass, and we can chat about the play and the process. And in the meantime, I want to say how grateful I am to The Road for their support of this play and so many others. And I hope that you can support The Road by making a donation so that they can continue to uplift the voices of playwrights, and get new plays out there in the world. Salut! The Big Red Nagahide Booth, or Would Be Elks, a comedy about negotiations, acceptance, and belonging by Jenny Webb. We see two women sitting together in the center of a red Nagahide booth, which, along with its environment, seems somewhat surreal, a bit larger than life. Whatever the size of the booth initially, it expands to fit the characters in action as the play progresses. It might ultimately span the width of the entire playing area. Yikes! Yeesh! Yeah? You said it, darling! Well... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, gosh. God, I'm glad we have this. Even if we're small tonight, this is absolutely what keeps me going. Oh, you, I love you. And I'm sorry if my head's not all here. No, I love you. You're good. It's all good. Good. I hope so. <laughs> Cassie raises her hand and into it falls a restaurant check. The total is 67. We'll just split it. What? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Fine. You sure? That's all right? Sure. No, wait. What about Ava? What did Ava leave? Oh, 18. 18? She ordered a steak. But she didn't drink. She had appetizers. But she didn't drink, though. Should I say something? Ava did this the last time, too. Did what last time? She didn't leave enough. That pisses me off. She left 18. For a steak and the calamari and the pot stickers plus tax and tip. But she didn't. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I love her and everything. I absolutely love her. <laughs> Next time we'll say something. You will? It shouldn't always be me. We'll figure it out. Next time. So, 67 minus 18. 50. Plus tax and tip. What's that? 67. No, say 80. <clears throat> minus 18. Yeah, so say 31. 32 each. That's a big tip. Um, oh, I only have a 20. Can I get a 15 from you for Rochelle's present? What? Her birthday present. It was 15 each. 
I thought I gave that to you. I, I gave you money for the present and money for the dinner. Oh, really? Yeah. You sure you gave it to me? That's not what you remember? I wasn't doing money for the dinner, so maybe. Uh, it's okay. You have 20. I'll leave another, wait, 12. Oh, I feel awful. I just thought... Never mind. It's fine. No. Take this. If you said you paid it, I'll put it on my car. I said I paid it because I did pay it, but it's $12. Next time you get me. I... I have to go. I, I love you. I love you. I feel awful. I didn't think... Don't be silly. I'll see you next time. Uh, yeah. I really need to get home, unfortunately. You're fine? Fine. I feel awful. Don't. I love you. I love you. Are we okay? <laughs> of course we are. You ready? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, I, I'll just hang for a bit. I'm meeting Zach. Oh. Here? You're meeting him here? I am. He said he really needed to see me. <laughs> All right, then. Well, give him my love. Definitely. And a kiss for your sister. How's she doing anyway? <sighs> they had her working at a copy place, but that ended tragically. So don't ask. It'll open the floodgates. I'll see ya. Love you. Beth moves back into the center of the booth, which appears to increase in size as if it's stretching its legs between rounds. Aaron hurries in. Hey! Oh, hi! I know, I'm so incredibly late, I couldn't get out of work, and then I had to take the bus. Ugh, you don't want to hear about it. Whew. So where is everyone? Only three of us tonight. We already, we already, um, closed the check. Oh, I really am late. So everyone's gone? You're leaving? Actually, no, I'm... Uh, then I'm getting you a drink. Uh, this is paid? I'll take it up. Oh, sure. Be right back. Uh, white wine? Red. Okay. Oh, no, 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 wait. What? Scotch. On the rocks. Single malls. Okay. Oh, take my card. No, I was late. Zach enters. Am I safe? Are they gone? Hi. He slips into the booth and gives her a quick kiss. So like I told you on the phone, I really appreciate this. Now, you know I would never intrude on you and all your, your whatever. It's your thing. It's just that, God, I don't know how to say this. Okay. You know, we've talked about me needing to figure things out, like my thing, that it's like I may be on the verge of whatever. I mean, you know, you told me. You sometimes have to do something even if you're not 100% sure why you're doing it or even what you're doing. So this is going to sound out of the blue or maybe not, but today... Are you okay? No, I'm icky. No. Do you have any money? You need another glass of wine? Yes. No, wait. I, uh... Aaron comes back in with a large old-fashioned glass and martini. So I took a cue from you, skipped the vino, and went straight for a martini. Oh. Hi. I, you two know each other, right? Uh, sure. How are you? Uh, good. Well, no, actually, I'm... <laughs> How I am is really in need of this. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were coming. Uh, can I get you something? No. Look, I I'm not supposed to be here. I mean, girls' night out, right? And I know you hate it when I call it that. He was going to meet me later, after everyone left. Yeah. <laughs> and it is later. <laughs> right? <laughs> and everyone did. <laughs> so that's me. That's my fault. <laughs> Boy, what a dummy. What a... Oh! I'm gonna go and... I'm okay. Come here. Sit up. Are you okay? No. I'm a dope. I'm a dope, dope, dope. Oh, come here. No. I'm sorry. I invited him. I'm, I'm, I didn't really invite him. It's just that we called earlier and, and we're usually all finished by now. No, I don't care. I'm just... Cheers. Cheers. So, what's wrong? What happened? Ugh. Everything. Nothing. It's just all. I am just such a moron. I really am. You are not going to believe what I found out. Messed up my entire day, and then with no car, it was like I got 
trapped and stuck in it, you know? Oh, I'm gonna quit my stupid job. If they don't fire me first, they are all such idiots. I work for the Idiot King, I really do, and I cannot take it anymore. The more I'm around him, the dumber I become. I can't stand it, I can't, I just can't. Was Ava here? Ava, yeah, yeah, she was actually. Oh, shoot, I need to find her. Do you know who she's staying with now? She still hasn't found a place? Oh, not yet. She's looking to house it to buy her more time. She should be looking for an apartment. She's been here nearly six months. Really? Yeah, she stayed with me for almost two when she first got here. That's right. And, and then who'd she stay with? All of us, each and every one of us, six months of our collective couches it hasn't given her enough time? God forbid she should be forced into paying rent. What the fuck is that about? I... Oh, I... I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I didn't mean... No. I'm sorry. I, I'm just out of sorts, that's all. Truth, <laughs> Mimi. Tell me about your day, your car, your boss. I'm sorry. What a jerk. Oh, God. You're the best. No, oh, come here. No, it's okay. I'm okay. I don't want to talk about it. I just wanted to get here and have drinks with you guys and I messed everything up because I was late. Don't be silly, I'm here. Are you hungry? I'm starving. I, I had a snack, I could eat. Is anyone? I probably forgot we were gone. Do, do, do you, do whatever you, just get whatever you want. Take, take my card, here. Open a tab. No. Yes! Hey, do you remember who did the money for Rochelle's birthday dinner? Who did the money? No, why? You want pot stickers? No, not pot stickers. I mean for her birthday. Someone collected it. I don't remember. How about nachos? I'm trying to cut back on dairy. Why? I can do nachos. Uh, so what's with the money? Did something... No, it's nothing. You really want pot stickers. Uh, nachos. I'll pick around the cheese. I'll do it. Let me get them. I'll see if I can find someone. Tell them we're here. Still, again. I'm so sorry I'm late. No, it's not a problem. I'm glad it worked out. I'll be right back. Are you all right? I will be. Uh-huh. <laughs> Aaron collapses back into the booth, which seems to embrace her and her martini. Zach enters with a healthy rock slap. Oh, hi. Hi. She's getting food. Want some nachos? Oh, sure. I, you know, she'll yell at me. I probably shouldn't. Yell at you? Because I got here early and interrupted you guys? Oh, no. I'm late. You're fine. And I'm so sorry about getting all <laughs> before. I had to figure out how to get here on the bus, and everyone already left, and today was just... Oh, me too. Quite a day. You mind if I sit? No. She'll be right back. So, a martini girl. Well, not really. Let's just say it's a martini night. Definitely. Mine's on the rocks. Oh, sure. <laughs> me, I like the glass. I drink it too fast. <laughs> 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 Should I go? I should go. I'll go. No, don't. I really should. I would never intrude, ever. That's a given. This is like a, a religious thing for her. The girls, first and third Fridays. Oh, she's the best. I love her so much. Well, I'm just really glad she's got you. She's, <laughs> listen to me. I say that and then here I am, the interloper. But believe me, that's so not me or what I'm about. I mean, e even though I've done it a couple of times and we've done it a couple of times, not here, never here. This place is almost sacred, right? I mean, we've met after. I mean, you ladies have your thing, and then we've... Uh... Oh, sure. I totally get it. I know, like, last time she left early because she had Wait, been... she left early? Hmm? She's not supposed to leave early. That's completely not right. This is your thing. She shouldn't be leaving early to meet me. She never told me that. It's okay. It's really okay. No, it is not. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. You can't say I told you. No, oh, I'm glad you did. No, you can't. You can't. Oh, hey, 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 I won't. I, I won't tell her. I won't say anything. Hey, 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 my lips are sealed. As he consoles her, Alexandra and Diane enter. 
What do we have here if it isn't a pair of sweet young things? Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm... Oh. Hello. That's... I know exactly who he is. Right, we met at... Uh... How are you? Great. I'll bet. She told me no one else was coming. We're going to be here by now. Well, we shouldn't be. We weren't even supposed to come tonight. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Oh? It's just with the day I've had. I'm going to go find her. Yes, you do that. She went to get... I'm starving. All day, I didn't have a chance to even... I'll just go, and um, I'm going. So you said. Right. With some difficulty, he works his way out of the booth. (laughs) Well then, I don't know about anybody else, but I could use a stiff one. (laughs) Isn't there a a somebody? Oh, they don't know we're here, I don't think. No? That is not going to work, is it? The service around here has gone to hell. I can do it. White wine. Vodka gimlet, straight up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I'll be right back. And bring a menu, will you? Want me to just order something? We have nachos coming. Nachos? Bring a menu. You love nachos. I'll bring a menu. (laughs) Thanks. Alexandra and Diane settle into the booth. You are terrible. What? She's frightened to death of you. Please, she'll be fine. I'm giving her some character. There was absolutely nothing going on here. Oh, I know that. Nothing except one of her, I'm a big fucking baby, please take care of me moments. Don't say that. She's adorable. Sure, but I cannot take another night of child care over cocktails. She's fine. She's great. She's getting drinks. The thing is, what is he doing here? Well, I hope it wasn't some sort of emergency. It better be an emergency of major fucking proportions. Did we get a call asking permission to bring a boy into our midst? He didn't know he, we were coming. That doesn't matter. She has not been granted dispensation. And for that, our friend with a penchant for younger men shall pay the price. You are beyond terrible. Yeah, I mean, she's buying us around. Yeah. Oh, my. Is that a problem? No. I hope she didn't think I wanted a vodka gimlet. I meant white wine. When I said yes, I meant yes to white wine. Well, you can move up with the big kids tonight. Could you be a worse influence? Worse than your prison women? They are an inspiration. Mm. You didn't think their stories were powerful? I did. I told you. I was inspired to come here. Aha, uh-huh. you could have stayed for the whole program. I mean, I tried. It's just my heart was getting so full of incarcerated warmth. Well, it didn't look good for me to leave. Well, I didn't force you to come with me. No, you didn't. All right, then. So when we're all assembled, I'm going to make an announcement giving you full credit for tonight's inspiration. And you must graduate to the hard stuff for the greater good. Wine's fine. I've got a march tomorrow. Of course you do. While I do my own personal protest at home in bed. (laughs) Beth enters carrying an extra large dish of nachos, a huge pile of tortilla chips covered with cheese, etc. And maybe the table and booth expand to accommodate it. Hey, when did you guys get here? Isn't herself. I. No, my darling, it seems you've invited a special guest without proper clearance. Oh, stop. It's not like that. I thought you were at some event tonight. We were. We left early. But thank God we're here now. Tell me, where in the Friday bylaws do we make an allowance for testosterone? Cheese, anyone? You're avoiding the question. Question or accusation. Where are your drinks? Oh, the littlest angel is getting them, but you're paying for them. Don't be mean. Why is that mean? Why am I paying for them? Hey! What is up with your young man? Is everything all right? (laughs) Why? Where is he? He went looking. Oh, he's fine. He's gorgeous as always. My point is we didn't expect to find him here, and I have some very important business to discuss. Forgive my mortal sin, but I got a desperate message telling me he simply must see me tonight. I knew it had to be something like that. He's very thoughtful, isn't he? Hello, what about loyalties here? He was supposed to meet me after, after you guys had left, but then everyone... 
Oh, fine. Mea culpa. And where are those cocktails? Listen, she might have thought I wanted vodka, and I know that's more than wine, so I can't write you a check. It's fine. I started a tap. Hey, do either of you remember who did the money for Rochelle's birthday? You did. You got a plant or something. We paid you, right? Thank you for doing that. An orchid, but for dinner. Who was in charge of the money for dinner? I don't. Did you discover some gross improprieties? Someone cooking the books? <laughs> Never mind. It's silly. Since when do we have books? <laughs> Aaron enters with incredibly hefty drinks, a significant gimlet, martini, and white wine. Okay, then. <laughs> oh. I'm good. Good. You wanted wine, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't? She did. Did I mess up? No, you were right. I wanted wine. I meant wine. Once again, saddled with your good intentions. Salud! Salud! Oh, did you bring a menu? Oh, sorry. I am. Oh, um... Never mind, young one. I will order something and I will put it on your tab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her, but doesn't she drive you crazy? Does indeed. <laughs> Seeing beyond. And thank you for putting up with us. What? Without you, you are totally ridiculous. You know it's true. And I'm really, really sorry about him being here. I didn't mean for this to happen. It's okay. I never would have. He said he was really glad you had us. What? What? What does that mean? What does what mean? That he was glad you had us. I think that's wonderful. Aren't you? Don't have what? Glad you have us. Yeah, but why is he? What exactly did he say? I can't really. He was just talking about how much we, I mean, you and him, are thinking you should be here with us tonight. And he was glad. Glad, as in supportive. Not a lot of men that young understand the importance of female relationships. Not a lot of men at all, actually. I guess. I'm starving. What do you think she'll order? I'm trying to cut back on dairy. I think sometimes Zach and I are in completely different worlds. I mean, even besides the age thing. That doesn't matter. It's like 10 years? That's nothing. Actually, it's five. He looks young. Only five? He certainly does. Thanks. Oh, but... So do you. Hey, uh, hang on. If it's only five, I... he's older than I am? Oh, God, never mind. Exactly. It doesn't matter. But it's just that there's a part of him that's, no, I love you, you, it doesn't matter, but he still has roommates. Wow. Really? So he acts younger than he is? I thought you liked him. I, I do like him. I didn't mean, I think he's terrific. What matters is that you care about the same things. You're on the same side. You're there for each other. Like I said, even 10, 12 years is... Am I in trouble now? <laughs> oh, I love you. How young do you think he acts? I told you, I thought he was... Well, that's not fair of me, I'm sorry. That's so funny. I always figured he was... Old. Right. Now I feel like I've upset you. I, I didn't. I am not upset. Where did I put my drink? Cassie enters holding a glass of white wine the size of a vase and a bucket of scotch as large as a potted plant. I hoped you'd still be here. <laughs> you ready? Oh, I am so glad you came back. Yay! I thought I'd missed everyone. How's your sister? At home. Thanks. They put her on a new medication, which is why I've returned for more of mine. <laughs> And a scotch for you. Bless you. Did I tell you how much it was? Didn't ask. I opened a tab. But I opened a tab. Yeah, now we've got two. <laughs> oh, are you ladies okay? Fine, thanks. And how are you? I'm good. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you are beyond good. <laughs> I didn't think you guys were coming tonight. We weren't. We haven't seen you for a while. Candlelight vigils or something? I don't. I'm kidding. Kind of. 
But it has been too long. Where is... She's getting food. Are you hungry? Am I hungry? Snacking. I could snack. What is she getting? I don't know. I thought you were meeting your fella. Yeah, he's somewhere. Or he was. Huh. I, I was afraid I might be interrupting. No, things got... No, you have to let me get your next one. I owe you $15. You don't owe me $15. I do. No worries. I've already forgotten. Your next one's on me. And it was only 12 <laughs> Next two. Alexandra enters with an enormous platter of food. Aha! The gang's all here! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> and what have you got there? Alexandra sets down the food alongside the nacho setup and assorted glasses on the table. What's this all still doing here? Isn't anyone... I haven't seen anyone. Not even a busboy. Cocktails without a busboy. What is all this? Oh, what isn't it? That's the better question. It's a sampler platter, darlings. A grand, fabulous fried food sampler platter. <laughs> it's all fried? Oh, only the best things, like in life. Well, I'm starving. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Or isn't. This is amazing. Yeah, I'm rethinking my snack strategy. And never fear, more drinks are on their way. Oh, you didn't order me one. I really shouldn't. It's time you're getting a gimlet, baby. Getting and imbibing. I love you and I'm loving this, but is it all on my tab? Well, I took pity on you and opened my own. I have one too. Oh, it's a beautiful world, isn't it? Tabs everywhere you turn. The perfect moment to announce tonight's agenda. And more cocktails. So you found someone? Oh, the next best thing. Ava's bringing them. I found her at the bar. Oh, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I didn't know how I was going to get home. She has my car. What? Ava had to borrow it. Oh, I cannot stand this. I really can't. Drink up, dearest. Just wait until you hear what I have planned. I love Ava, but she drives me bonkers. Do not tell her that I have a tab. Don't get distracted. I'm about to upgrade your very existence here. Actually, it's Ava. What? Who? Her name's pronounced Ava. Since when? I never knew that. Really? Ava? That's how she introduced herself when I first met her, but before she left town. Huh. That's so funny. Ava. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, we've been saying Ava for forever, and she's never said a goddamn thing. Maybe she felt awkward. Well, now I feel awkward. I feel pissed off. And what the fuck is she doing with your car? Ladies, I have an announcement. Can we drop the Ava issue for a moment? I the other issue. Excuse me! I have the floor. I brought food, and the way it works here is that the fried food bringer gets the red dog a hide floor. So, <clears throat> one and all, I was bound and determined to get here tonight because I have something very exciting to share. Mixing with the prison population this evening was just the impetus I needed to put forward a recently birthed steam, one with irresistible baby antlers that will grow to protect every one of us. So thank you, my friend. Wait, you don't mean, you and I were joking about that. We were, but that was before I chatted with one of your ladies in her jumpsuit. About? Well, the power of belonging, our collective need for advancement and validation. Which somehow led you back to Victoria's insane invitation? It's not insane, it's exciting. Who's Victoria? What are you two talking about? Something which could very well change our lives, or at the very least, our designated Friday nights. Ooh, that does sound exciting. If it weren't so disturbing. Disturbing? Oh, that could be even better than exciting. No, she's being a spoil sport. What I am proposing, my friends, is a transformative step, which is so in keeping with our spirit that it will be like slipping into a pair of comfortable yet classically styled shoes and moving gracefully forward with only the slightest bit of effort. One word, ladies, elks. We are all going to become elks. Elks. That's what I said. That's what I thought you said. Elks. Yes. He wants to be elks. This is a good thing. It's an extraordinary thing. Not moose or lions. Or masons. Or knights of the KKK. Oh, please. Oh, I get it. 
elks. Fine, fine, fine. So do you all want to know the number one reason for embracing elkdom? Does they really say elkdom? Among the many perks of elkdom, thank you very much, is a core philosophy which speaks literally volumes. Are you ready for this? Nope, not without another drink. Oh, exactly, that's it. What's it? Drinks, free or cut rate cocktails. When you're an elk, when you're a member of the inner circle, they charge next to nothing for one healthy, free, poor masterpiece after another. Really? <laughs> and to top that, no self-respecting elk lets another elk buy his own drinks. His own drinks. His, hers. Elks are all the same in elkdom. I'm sure. I don't know. I never thought of our spirit as being particularly elkish. Elk-like. Elks couldn't be more us, and there are lodges all across the country, a dozen within a 25-mile radius. So you're basically looking at elk lodges as bars. Uh, bars with antlers. Lounges. They're called lounges. Now, I'm not saying that's the whole membership package, but you got to hand it to those elks. You can't have a lodge without a lounge. Full of nothing but old white Republican men. Oh, there are good uses for old white Republican men. Think of it as... Opening up your world with a happy hour bonus. Zach enters, struggling to carry an impressive tray of drinks for all. Each would dwarf a large coffee can. Okay, I know I'm wimping out, but can I get a little help here? Just in time, a young buck bearing oh so welcome gifts. <sighs> your friend at the bar told me to bring these to you guys, so I'm not intentionally crashing the party. I'm obeying like a good boy. Oh, this is the most beautiful martini I've ever seen. That my white wine, you devil? Don't encourage him. He's just after a good tip. And you don't think I deserve it? Do elks tip or is service from the underclasses their privileged right? Drink your gimlet and stop being fussy. What's with you anyway? This whole... Are you really serious? I'm straight I am. Then you're right. I'd better keep drinking. Exactly. Do you understand the kind of opportunity I am talking about here? Uh, but where's a, I mean, Ava, wasn't she? Jesus Christ, we'll fill her in when she gets here. She's the one at the bar. She said she had to run. Wait, she left? Not quite. She's waiting for a to-go order. A to-go order? A sandwich or something. I have to catch her. She's got my car. She abandons her martini and hurries away into a flash of lightning. Apparently, we just finance all of us after dinner snack. We have? You can bet if there's a tab, that sandwich is on it. Oh, I can't stand this. Baby, it's just a sandwich. It's not. It's everything, every time. And the answer to all your problems, BPOE, the Benevolent Protective Order of Elks. So you guys are going to become Elks. Cool. It's cool. It's extremely cool. Thank you for noticing. I'm sorry, but I so do not get this. Wait, wouldn't it just be Elk? More than one Elk is still Elk, right? <laughs> or is it possessive? Oh, who cares why the S? What matters is the drinks. That's plural, if you didn't notice. Actually, one or two elk is elk. A larger group is elks. Oh, you say a herd of elk, not a herd of elks. Do you? Yes. Well, maybe you're wrong. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what do we do as members? What are we benevolently protecting? Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's something worthwhile. I haven't worked out the details. You shouldn't even be contemplating the details. Do you realize who these people are and what they stand for? What is your problem? My problem uh -huh. is that you, apparently, have no problem joining a sexist, racist, fascist, religiously discriminatory organization whose latest throwback practice is interrogating members about their ties to Mother Russia! Really? No, they are all about diversity and she's making that last bit up. No, you said you heard it from Victoria herself. No, one of the exalted rulers made some vague references at all. Hang on, exalted what? Oh yes, picture bonfires and hooded figures because the Elks have exalted rulers and one grand exalted ruler. Ooh, that's marvelous. 
Just leave it to a fraternal organization. A fraternal order, a service organization. Consider it brotherly love. It's not gender specific. Uh, it most certainly is gender specific. Fraternal equals men. There are tons of women elk. It's just a phrase. And that statement itself doesn't bother you. Okay, okay, okay. We, we don't all have to join. You can have up to nine non-elk lounge guests per visit. Hey, maybe women are like elk adjuncts. Does. Ooh. Would that work? That's, that's <laughs> not... Pardon me. Uh, I have to get up early. I'll, I'll see you all next time. You can find a ride? Absolutely. Don't worry about me. Hey, no. Uh, let me walk you out. No, I'm fine. Love you, sweetie. We don't see you enough. Sometimes I just have other places to be. Goodbye. Bye. It's starting to rain. Why don't you walk her out? I'll walk her out. Is she okay? Was she crying? I don't know. She just gets like this. Why did you start this whole thing anyway? What, what's the matter? Do you feel threatened? I'm game. I could be an elk. Does that make me a bad person? Yeah. What I'm saying is we are legitimate on our own. I don't know why you need that kind of whatever it is. Never mind. It's just a fleeting whim shot down mid-flight. Are you okay? Oh, I'm, I'm fabulous. But what the fuck is this mess about? This is a disaster. It's like the Last Supper with no one to bust the fucking table. I I'm gonna go find someone. Oh, anyone need anything? Another round? Oh, and they forgot the onion rings. I'll be back. Hey, wanna be an Eastern star? What? My grandma was an Eastern star because my grandfather was a Mason. They have secrets and women couldn't join or at least that's how i remember it <clears throat> so they were eastern stars I, I thought it was just so wonderful when i was little it was all very mysterious and magical they had pins and rings and and, and meetings you need another drink oh, i'm okay are you i'm fine i'm i, th I think we're calling it quits what well, who's calling it quits who do you think? Oh, wait, you and Zach? Why? What happened? Oh, God, is there someone else? Yes, I've taken up with the busboy. That's why you haven't seen one here tonight. He's at home in a sarong. No, I meant him. Right. Well, there's no one else. Really, it's just time. Why is it time? It just is. We have fun. We respect each other. He's terrific. But I, you know, we talked about it. We, we knew when it started, it wasn't a long-term thing. He's got his problems to work out. I've got my stuff and he's five years younger than me. Only five? I, I thought it was... It's five, but it's enough so that it's going to make, it's made him safely unavailable. Except it didn't really exactly work out that way. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I know from personal experience that safe sucks if it means you end up all alone. I won't be all alone. I'll have you guys. There's something you're not telling me. There's nothing I'm not telling you. And why are you trying to sabotage this? It's not sabotage, it's just time. And you're not alone, what about your sister? Oh, yeah. My own little disabled albatross, severely challenging any chance I have for independent living. Oh, did I just say that? Did something happen? No. Nothing happened. Nothing ever happens. And I didn't mean it. I knew you didn't. I love her very much, and I'll take care of her until the day I die. That's what I do now. I'm the world's most ill-suited caregiver, and she's my adorably oversized sister and a wonderful, sweet, funny, clueless thing. And I love her. I know, I love her too. 
and I love you. Oh, you guys, you are, you're like my. Don't say it. I'll cry. <laughs> okay, I won't. And don't cry. I don't know what I'd do if I saw you cry. But that's, that's why I'm saying to you, don't fuck things up and say it's time because there comes a point when there's not all that much time left, you know? Well, it's not me who's saying it. Oh. I mean, it was bound to happen sooner or later, and I'm, I'm okay with that. You look not okay. I guess it just sort of took me by surprise a little bit, even though I knew it shouldn't. What did he say? Oh, he didn't yet, but it's coming. That's why he's here tonight, why he wanted to meet me. Yuck. I thought it was funny, him here. It just seemed to make sense. Well, did he come here to do this? Make sense to whom? It was actually my idea. Well, you're a masochist. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal. It's horrendous and you're insane, but he should know. God, what a shit. It's like he's defiling everything we're about. What a shithead, user, selfish puppy bastard. God, I hate him. What a prick. No, I am okay. It's all very, very, very okay. Oh, you got that? Excellent. You definitely got a new career ahead of you if you want it, baby. Uh, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't say no to anything right now. Really? Oh, yeah. It's my time. I can feel it. I'm not ready. The seat of the booth opens up, allowing Beth to crawl into it and disappear. Alexandra and Zach enter. She is carrying an outrageously oversized serving of onion rings, which look more like bicycle tires. Hello. He carries a tray of gargantuan pale-sized drinks. Where is everyone? You need more than me? Oh, never, darling. It's just that you look so very small and pathetic all alone in that big booth by yourself. <laughs> Why do you always know just what to say? Where did... She slipped into the ladies' room. <clears throat> Sanctuary. <laughs> you got a white wine there? Ooh, do I hear an edge of desperation? <laughs> Alexandra sets down the onion rings. The tabletop is very crowded. So, you'll love this. The staff was so chagrined about their short shrifting us. Chagrined or shamed? There's a difference? Shame. <laughs> Funny you should use that word. I was only showing the culinary crew the light that in their last exercise, they deprived us of a major food group. So they gave us a round. And now you all have me to thank for your vegetables in the form of onion wheels. <laughs> I'm not hungry. <clears throat> You'll never grow if you don't eat. Really, I'm fine. Well, I'm starved. Do you mind? I feel like I could eat an elk. <laughs> 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 So um, my disapproving friend hasn't returned to the fold yet? Uh, no. Yeah. Can I just say that it would be much easier for all of us if she'd stop thinking of herself as motherfucking Teresa? I don't think she... She does, which makes me Satan incarnate with tits. <laughs> That's great. You guys are great. You're certainly in a good mood. <laughs> Something on your mind you want to share with us? I... No. Well, yes, but it's private, so I'll wait. Oh, that'll never work around here. We are not women who wait, and secrets are not allowed, my pet. Really? Yes, really. If you're a man amongst us, you must show a entail. No, we've never had a man amongst us. i read the bylaws. It's there. So, before you take another bite or another drink, it's time for the truth. What has brought you to this place, to this very specific point in your life where you find yourself penetrating our particular circle? Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to work out like this. We were supposed to meet. But the real reason, reach into your past, reveal what it is that makes you the first male in our ranks on this night of all nights. Precisely. Why the fuck are you here? I, I, I got a scholarship once from the Elks. What? I mean, that's not why I came, but through some weird karmic universe connection, maybe that's why I'm here? What a night, huh? Unbelievable. I mean, I remembered when you guys were on the Elks bit. I wrote an essay and won a scholarship. 
See, how beautiful is that? It was about losing both my parents. I think one of my teachers sponsored me. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with? <laughs> You're not fooling anyone, you know? What are you talking about? It's true. How dare you come here? Here, of all places, like it would take the edge off your snot-nosed speech of arrested adulting. You want to go find yourself? Do it somewhere else, far, far away, and leave my friend alone. What are you talking about? <sighs> Nothing. Never mind. I have to go. I have my own circle of hell waiting for me at home. I didn't know she was married. She's not. Aaron enters, barely managing to carry three insanely big drinks. Think bathroom trash cans. Oh, wow. I thought I could do this, but I should have taken two trips. Zach moves to help her. Oh, wait. I thought I saw... She had to go get something out of her ass. I think it was me. What? I, I mean, I think she was mad at me. Why? I have no idea. Because I'm here? I should... You most certainly should not, young man. Sit back down. No, I have to go. Oh, but who will drink the wine? You'll find someone. Oh, that's what my mother always said. Aaron discovers the onion wheels. Oh, gosh. <laughs> look at these. Help yourself. I've had my fill. They look great. But thanks. I remember when I could eat like that. What? I used to be able to eat anything I wanted, anytime I wanted. Oh, it's not that I can eat anything. Just most things. No, not really. I have to be really careful, actually. Ah! I so don't want to hear that! What? I want one of us to be free, to eat and drink with abandon, to dine wherever and do whatever with whomever, completely without a care. I, I want, I need to know that you are careless, not carefree, careless that you thoroughly consider the repercussions and then say, fuck it, because at least one of us should be able to take a step without worrying about where it lands, to have the freedom to move forward, liberated from the yoke of always doing the right fucking thing. I don't understand. No, you don't. I... The plates, platters, and glasses of increasing size completely cover the table. I... Is that my scotch? Aaron disappears behind the dishes. Mm. Just had a really hard day. Oh, haven't we all? So be honest with me, what is really going on here? With her impossibly hard day? No, with you, you guys. Us guys, us guys. Oh, you mean me and Miss Holier Than Thou, my indignant activist buddy. Wow, what started this? Well, let me see if I can recall that fateful moment. Did I meet her in the convent or was she out healing the sick? I meant the Elks conflict. Well, the Elks conflict? Is that what this is? Has she organized some sort of woodland creature uprising? You know what I mean. There is more going on here than Elks. Yes, there is. That's what I'm saying. She is the one attacking them and she doesn't even know what she's talking about. The world is not black and white and there's more to life than crusades. You spend all your time worrying about women behind bars and oppressed animals in costume. But uh, since you have no fucking sense of humor, you don't think before you lash out. And just because my problems are first world problems doesn't mean they're not problems. What's wrong with animals in costume? Not a goddamn thing. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like I, I can't do or say anything anymore without her getting all up in arms. Are you just doing this to piss her off? Is that what this is? Why would you say that? Because that's what you do over and over again. And this time you've gone too far. You and the goddamn Elks are gonna drive her away. Suddenly I, I've crossed some invisible line of bovine evil. No, that's not. <sighs> then stop making me feel like I'm a bad person. Last time I looked, you were sitting here with me knocking him back while she was out there fighting for the rest of the planet. <sighs> okay, okay, you're right. But you do know that that a line in this world has been crossed. We can't go back. And that's actually good. I mean, we should all be more like her or try to be. It's like, like me. I get totally overwhelmed and tell myself I, I do what I can and then maybe it makes a difference. But she, she believes in things. She believes things can change. She believes with such absolute certainty. Which makes life extremely difficult. Thank you. Thank her. 
I feel lucky she chooses to be with us. Fine, then I'll just leave you to it. Join the Elks myself, plenty of members I can get lucky with. She makes her way out of the booth. Stop it. And that is such a horrible term, member. Why, we, why do you even want to be a member of anything? Does being a member count if you don't know you're a member? What? Because they just made me one. I never wanted to be one. Who did? What are you talking about? AOL. That's what happened today, what I found out. I guess it started back when I was in school. AOL? America Online. I know what AOL is. My mother has AOL. AOL, that's your big crisis? No. I mean, yes, because I had no idea about any of it. I feel so stupid. I try to tell myself I am a successful functioning adult and that I'm bright and interesting and people want to be my friend and I'm going to get married and have a career and be a good parent and tastefully decorate my home so that people say to me, oh, how does she do it all without any effort? And then something like this happens and- For Christ's sake. I found out today that I've been paying AOL to be a member for seven years. <laughs> Nobody pays for AOL, not anymore. Apparently some people do. <laughs> How could you not know? They, they didn't send you notices? To my AOL address that I forgot I had. You never looked at your bills? Well, it's not like there was a big AOL or anything. What was there? A little AOL. Yeah. How much money have you paid over seven years? How much total? Almost $3,000. What? Almost. Jesus, that's worse than stupid. That is completely irresponsible. You throw away thousands of dollars because you couldn't be bothered to read a fucking statement, and then you show up here and us to feel sorry for you, and it's all so cute, and the rest of us have to fight to hang on to everything we What is wrong with you? I'm so, so, so sorry. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. I, I, I didn't mean it. And now who's gone too far? <laughs> I... Okay. You know what? We're going to get you that money back. Every last dime. Really? Really? Yes. Really. I love you. So what, you're just going to make a phone call? I'll start there and then, who knows? We'll, we'll start a petition, we'll stage a protest. And I love you. Oh, thank you. But you are crazy if you think you can do anything. See, that's where you're wrong. They think they can get away with this crap because we're all powerless and, and polarized and don't have any connections, but the truth is we are connected to each other. We don't need to be a part of something bigger to validate us. We're enough, together. You sound like an ex-friend of mine. Good. So you're not leaving us, right? Because we're all just one happy family, all for one and one for all. Yes. Including Ava. Right, Ava. And I love Ava. <laughs> the answer is yes. She's part of the package. I'm not wired to take on the world, not on my own. I know that, but I also know there are things in my life right now I need to believe in, to fight for. I don't want to be alone. And where did that come from? Sudden realization and the need for another drink. I'll get them. You don't have to. I want to. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. Then see if they have a dessert menu. Want me to just order something? I'll go with you. Okay. Are we okay? Sure. It'll be my coup de grace farewell. Don't say that. You're not going anywhere. Hey. Hi. Look who's resurfaced. What have you been up to? Looking for her. He slides into the booth and gives Beth a heartfelt kiss. 
I needed that. To be looked for? You're just in time for a treat to end all treats. Don't move. We'll be right back. You women. My God, it's like I dived into your hole and got completely lost. <laughs> yeah? Wait, uh, that didn't come out right. I meant like a rabbit hole. No, like... I know. You need a drink, sweetie. No. Well, yes, but I actually have to go. Oh. I didn't want to leave without talking to you, only now I'm out of time, so I have to meet someone. Oh. I'm sorry. You never mentioned. I know, things just got so crazy. That's a crazy night. Well, that's what I was trying to tell you, what I came here to tell you, but I didn't want to say anything with them around. Oh. Well, it's kind of hard to go into. I, I mean, I know you'll understand, but I don't know if they would. I'm not even sure if I do. I mean, I'm as much scared as I am excited. That's why I wanted to tell you alone. Okay. Only not like this, because now I just have to lay it on you and run. Okay. To meet this woman. Okay. This is not okay. I made a mistake. It's not okay. What? It's not okay for you to tell me this. We need to talk about a lot of things somewhere, not here, not tonight. But I just... What are you talking about? But it's not time, not yet. So you go, and I'll see you tomorrow. Did I say something? Are you serious? How old are you? Okay, look, let me just tell you. Today, I found this woman online. Oh, hand me that drink. Or maybe she found me, which is the most amazing thing because she was a friend of my mother's after all these years. Mother's? A friend of your mother's? Yeah, right. What age would that make her? I, I don't... I mean, my mother died when I was three, so she'd be, like, old? But that doesn't matter. She's great. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. The thing is that she told me she lost touch with my grandparents, so for years didn't know where I was. But she has this tape that my mother made for me when she was sick, before she died. This whole tape that my mother asked her to keep safe so I could hear it when I turned 18. A message from my mom to me, because even though no one else would admit she was dying, she, my mom, knew it. So she made me this tape, I mean, for me, to hear when I became a man, as stupid as that sounds. What? Unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've always felt like there was this mystery when it came to my mother. And of course I lost my dad too, but he was just wasn't all that complicated, you know? Okay, so this woman, this, this friend... Of my mom's, came out of nowhere. And it's pretty incredible when you think about it, because I have pictures and even videotapes of my mom, but I could never come up with a complete person. I mean, even the fact that she died when she really wasn't supposed to, I always felt like there was some clue in that, like why I'm here, where I belong, what I'm supposed to do, if that makes sense. I, I... You know me. You've said it. It's like I'm afraid to make a move because I'm always waiting for something, and I don't want to miss it or go in the wrong direction without it, so I just stay still and wait. Right. But I know I can't keep waiting forever. And I think that this is maybe that something. Let me walk you out. Okay. Remember Rochelle's birthday dinner? Which one's Rochelle? We went to that snotty French place. <laughs> Cassie and Diane emerged from behind the booth with giant gimlets reminiscent of parasols. The rain has stopped and we're bathed in streaks of moonlight. So, where is she? Oh, she's here. Thanks for letting me drag you back. You didn't? I so did. But were you really going anywhere? Maybe not. Not yet anyway. As much as I'd like to sometimes. Hearts are funny like that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Should we get order something to eat? I could use a little something. Snack. A bite. <laughs> okay, I know we give you a hard time, but you know we love you, right? And really, what are a few would-be elks in the grand scheme of things? It's not even... The point is that she doesn't care about what's important to me. She has no idea. <laughs> Everything that I carry with me every day. Which is why you have us. 
<laughs> so you can let some of it go once in a while. That's not. Why not? I mean, let us be your dirty, little unworthy secret. I don't. Consider it. Then all you have to worry about carrying is that gorgeous gimlet. <laughs> you think? It's a burden, but <laughs> you know what I wish? I wish I had a bathtub full of gimlets or a wading pool full of gimlets where I could lie down naked, surrounded by nice, cool gimlets. Oh, uh, that sounds really nice. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> if you played your cards right, you could make it into an act of civil disobedience. Is that a joke? <laughs> no, actually, I mean, if anyone could do it, you could. <laughs> hey, I think that would be fabulous. I'd pay money to see that. We could make it a BPOE fundraiser. That is a joke. <laughs> so you think I'm completely ridiculous? Uh, no. Uh, what the, I'm sorry. I think you're, you're the opposite. Wait, oh God, what would that even be? No one wants to be the opposite of ridiculous, do they? Or, or how about just the right amount of ridiculous? Just enough so you, you know you belong here with us because you do. We'll see. <laughs> Beth enters slowly floating down from above in front of a very full and extremely bright moon. Yeah, isn't it always that way? From up above, it's all manageable, doable, dealable, adorable, and and I can see exactly why and where and how I fit in. It's a beautiful thing to look at, and and then I'm back down, and suddenly I can barely move, barely function, barely even scavenge for liquor. I'm going to pretend like I'm already home. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to lie down and, and you can cover me with paper napkins and leftover food to keep me warm and I'll wake up and it'll be tomorrow and, and life will be crystal clear and, and neat and tidy and I'll just put it into my snappy little pocketbook for safekeeping. Cassie and Diane help her before she collapses onto the ground. <laughs> it's been a really long evening. Have you eaten? Not anything real. That's just how I feel. Alexandra and Aaron enter. Alexandra pushes a cart with mugs of Irish coffee the size of tall laundry baskets. Aaron pulls a row of sofa cushioned sized pieces of chocolate cake. Hey ho, ladies, nightcap and dessert. Irish coffee, come to mama. She takes one of the mammoth coffees and holds it against her chest with both arms. And whipped cream, does it get any better than this? She rests her head on the pillow of whipped cream and Erin sidles up to her own mug. Oh, this is the most excellent Irish coffee I've ever seen. What makes it Irish? Just the whiskey? So, are you going to join us? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Something like a warm body late at night. Except maybe chocolate. <laughs> what do you think? Will you indulge me? Indulge with you? That too. I hear chocolate. I was allergic to chocolate when I was a kid. I was lucky. I was allergic to lima beans. He was allergic to heights. <laughs> heights? Yeah, that's what her parents told her. <laughs> that is true. That is so wrong. <laughs> but you'll still sit in a tree outside of AOL with us, won't you? What? Oh, yes. I knew you'd step up. Just say yes. We say yes. To AOL? No, to us. Oh, count me in. Whatever it is. <laughs> Man, this is the most magnificent cake I've ever seen. What do you say? Dive in. I'm ready. Let's <laughs> do it. Oh, should we wait for Ava? <laughs> Kidding, right? Diane suddenly kicks off her shoes and steps directly into the piece of cake. Her feet sink and the icing laps up onto her calf. Delicious! The other women remove their shoes and follow suit. 
this is the kind of cake I want for my wedding. Everyone has white cakes, but I want chocolate. Oh, carrot cakes were big. Everything. Remember everything. when everyone had carrot cakes? Deep, dark, chocolatey chocolate. Whatever happened to angel food cake? I never really frosted. I think I still have a pan somewhere. You huh? served it with fruit. It's got a bad rap, angel food cake. There was nothing there. It's not aced out by devil's food cake. Wait, what's devil's food cake? You're in it up to your ankles, sweetie pie. Chocolate cake is devil's food cake? <laughs> That's I great. I've never heard that. that. Wait, why is it devil's food cake and not angel's food cake? There's only one angel? It's not a plural possessive. The women shake off their feet and pick up their shoes and bags, making their way out. Or maybe the cake was not to feed an angel. It was made of angel. <laughs> You're terrible. You are terrible. But what if she's right? Can't be right and terrible? What's the point? <laughs> As they exit, Zach enters from the audience. He takes in the monumental coffee mugs left on the floor and the detritus of cake and frosting. Without entering the playing area, he speaks directly to the audience. When I was little, I had a teacher who always said to me, nothing ever turns out like you think it will. Like that's a bad thing. So I met this woman, this friend of my mother's, and it was cool because immediately I really liked her. I mean, it was all incredibly easy. It's not usually that way with me. We get ready to listen to this tape, which she has never heard, never listened to all these years because it was mine. But before we turned it on, she asked if I wanted to listen to it alone. Only it seemed right that she be there because I could see how much she loved my mother. I mean, loved her, really, really loved her. And at the start of this tape, I'm like, wow. I mean, I've heard my mother's voice before in videos, but this is different because this time it's for me. And as the voice goes on, this friend goes, totally berserk. She's crying and I'm crying and she, my mother, is talking about the weather and her parents and my bathroom habits at three and her medical reports and hospitals and, and how much uh, everything was costing and my dad's being angry and, and her being angry and did I at three know that they were angry and how is that affecting the weather and her parents and my bathroom habits? Well, it became very clear that the voice on the tape wasn't my mother. I mean, not really. Because by the time she made this tape, my mother was already uh, very sick. So I get this and uh, I'm disappointed. And the tape is still playing, but I, I look over at this woman, this friend, and she's stopped crying. She looks horrified. She looks panicked. She looks me in the eye and I can tell that she thinks she's failed. My God, I've never felt so awful for anyone in my life. I go to hold her and say, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And for the first time ever, I hear in my voice, my mother's voice, and I believe myself that it is okay. And then this woman, who by this time is bawling again like a maniac, and we both are, says to me, I'm so sorry. And I'm ready to do my magical it's okay again so that I can be the one to make everything better. Only she stops me with, well, I guess the truth is, if you want to know your mother, you'll have to meet her friends. He looks again at what's left of the evening on stage. And if they're anything like this, I cannot wait. The women re-enter, having managed to slap themselves back together. Can someone give me a ride home of a... I'll give you a ride home. Someone else drives. The rain stops. It's beautiful. How many cars do we have? Too many. We have too much of everything. Yet never enough. I can drive. How many of us can you deal with? And if that's not a loaded question. <laughs> You're all good. <laughs> we are all good. We're the best. Oh, don't we have tabs? Oh, don't worry. A couple of visiting elks picked them up. Really? 
Uh, wouldn't that be elk? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Definitely. God, I love women. The lights start to fade on the playing area, and a light emanates from the pile on top of the table. The big red Naga hide booth seems somehow satisfied. We might hear an audible sigh or other sound. Maybe we wonder who's going to do the dishes. End of play. <laughs>